What's up, everybody? Eric here, and I am joined with my co-pilot, Omega, in the building, uh, who is taking a large sip from his mug. <laughs> Replicators, oh, Arrow Gray is terrible. Yeah, uh, yeah obviously. Um, so we're coming to you with our rant and review of uh, Star Trek Discovery from this past weekend. Unfortunately, it didn't go up on Saturday. So. Yeah, sorry. I kind of overslept and just, oh, I was just... Yeah. I was exhausted over the weekend. I and just uh, Sunday, I ended up going to bed at like nine. Yeah. So I was like, wow. So, cause like you disappeared. I was like, you ready to go in a couple hours? And then you just didn't respond after a bit. And I was like, yeah, oh, my okay, bad. Sorry about good. that. <laughs> that's why we, the review didn't go up on Saturday. We're still going to target Saturdays. So hopefully we'll be able yeah. to, to get those down. But either way, I mean, I didn't have any videos going up tonight. So this is perfect for, uh, for a Monday. And uh, hopefully you guys totally understand. So we're going to be talking about. Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 8, titled The Sanctuary. And um, this episode was directed by Jonathan Frakes. I don't know if you saw that or not. Oh. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of mixed feelings about that. But that was yeah. a couple couple things about that there. Um, I We hadn't... I don't know if he had actually directed anything else this season, but when I saw the name pop up on the screen, I said, Oh, well, that's interesting. This is going to be, uh, cause <laughs> isn't he, didn't he direct like one of the worst movies, uh, out of the star Trek, uh, next generation era. I like, because I like yeah. Genesis, dang it. <laughs> but he did direct it. Correct. That's the one. He I directed. think so. Yeah. yeah. So that's the one. Cause that, that one gets a, a lot of criticism. So, uh, seeing his it, name pop up or something, yeah, I know it's like, going to be like, divided. So yeah, I like Jonathan Frakes. Is I even like some of the episodes he's di he directs. It's like I guess some of them. I guess they are all aren't hitters. Well, I don't know because he directed that movie. I don't know if he's the person that did the screenplay for it or even the script for that film. Yeah. I know that he. Directed I mean, yeah, directors. Right? Directors don't have as much pull as you would think. They kind of right. work with what they got. So yeah. So this week's episode was very different from last week. Um, yeah. Last week was a very talky, talky exposition episode. This week it was pretty much a lot of um, stories going on. There's a lot. Yeah. I think there was like two or three um stories that we were dealing with this week and the two main ones for me was obviously the story with book and michael and the stuff yeah. with giorgio mm -hmm. and uh and the stuff going on with this nebula and everything so let's go ahead and get to this review just want to point out there will be spoilers for this and there's also going to be spoilers we're going to talk a little bit about a short trek episode called calypso which is also on cbs all access and um if you haven't watched that you might want to pause this and go watch that it's like it's like 18 minutes it's not very long Go check that out and then come back here because we are going to talk a bit about that and how it may actually tie into something that happens on this week's uh, episode of Discovery. So um, let's talk about the Giorgio stuff first because I feel like that's we can all put that in a condensed bubble and sort of uh, cover it because it it, it kind of leaves us on a cliffhanger with what happens. And correct me if I'm yeah. wrong about any of this, but uh, so Hugh uh, wants to keep Giorgio in check and figure out what's going on with her and this condition that she has. And uh, she's being super annoying and disruptive as she always is. Terrible. And she doesn't want, yeah, she doesn't want to do anything that comes off as weak. And, and apparently, yeah, medical stuff is weak now. Like any kind of diagnosis. Well, when you're, you're the so. emperor of a cutthroat empire, you, it's like she said, it's like they see my neck. I'm done. You can't yeah. show any weakness. Yeah, but she's still in. She's still in her mirror universe. Uh, yeah, she still, have that, run, yeah, she still so. has that mentality. <laughs> so they apparently they figure out that um, something. I think, and, and again, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong here. She's got some kind of deterioration neurological situation where they're not totally sure what's actually happening to her, but they know it's not good. Mm -hmm. So they want to run, or he wants to run some tests on her and they, they Excuse put her in this state where she goes into like a dream or a vision, like when she has these episodes, I think the, the wasn't it the device forced one of the episodes to come on or something like that, or were they just waiting for it to happen? I wasn't totally sure. Um, how that was happening but were they just monitoring her when one of her episodes happened or did they force her into an episode i think they were just monitoring her when it when it happened and then that's when they detected all that yeah stuff that was going on with her and i'm not sure if you want to go to this point yet but the weird how she was being distorted and all that i don't know if that was caused by the device or was that just her being that she's not from this universe i i'm totally like you, I'm confused on that. I don't really know what's actually happening, but I think that's on purpose. Mm -hmm. I think we're supposed to be questioning yeah. that. Uh, but what we get is we get these weird dreams or visions that she's having, and I don't know if they're flashbacks of her life in the Terran Empire or if 
this is something that's new to her. I, I'm not totally sure what's going on, but she yells out the name San or San or something, and I'm not mm -hmm. sure who that character is either. And we see blood in this vision and, and all this other stuff going on. And, and it looks like it comes from like when she was younger. Like I'm totally, totally confused on what's happening here. Do you have any theories on what we're seeing? Is this her backstory yes. or is this a vision of something else? Like I think yeah, I think I think this is her backstory. I think uh, that you know she always says, I, I've ki I killed my mother. I killed my mother. No, I think someone else did and she got traumatized for it. But once again, being deterrent empress, you cannot show any of that that. You can't show any of that uh, emotional weaknesses. It's probably something where, like, what happened to your mother? Oh, I killed her. I'm I'm Empress now. So one of the theories I saw online, and this is probably not going to happen. I just want to tell you guys, this is, again, anything when it comes to online theories, just take it with a grain of salt or whatever. Uh, but one of them is that she is slowly becoming the Giorgio from this universe. Like she's being replaced with the, with the, she's losing some sort of memories. quantum entanglement type thing where it's like, yeah. she, you know, there's the, you know, the mirror universe and prime universe and they're just sort of, sort of merging into yeah, one. Yeah. That's what they're, that's one of the online theories is that she could be becoming that I would not disagree. character from this universe. So I wouldn't disagree. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. And that was even circulating before this episode happened. A lot of people thought that was eventually going to happen. Cause let's be honest here. There's really no way to redeem her character. I mean, she's oh, no. awful and there's no way to do that. I love um, her though. <laughs> I love that. She's awful. No, I think she's a great character, but yeah, there's no way to redeem her. And, um, you know, we sort of are left on this cliffhanger where she's she took one of the devices that they were using to monitor. She's trying to break into it to decode it, and um, she gets caught. And then Hugh has a conversation with her about it, and they sort of try to to work through whatever's happening. But we don't really get any answers. It sort of leaves us there where we just know that something's happening to her. It's awful, and we don't really have an idea of what's going on. I, I wonder if this mirror universe stuff, cause we don't have a lot of episodes left to deal with that. We still have to deal with the, what happened with the burn. And now we have this other situation with the ship and a nebula. I, I don't know how much more mirror universe stuff we're going to tackle, or if the story is going to be all. a lot shorter than what we think. It yeah. Is. What I'm worried about, which is one of the reasons, one of the issues I had with this entire episode is that it's probably going to try to jam so much into like one episode. They're going to have probably have four or five different storylines into one episode. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of the issue I had with this episode being that it was practically three major situations that probably needed their own individual episodes merged into one show. Yeah. It felt like in, in looking back at last week, now it feels like last week, a lot of time was wasted that, that some of this mm -hmm. stuff could have happened in last week's episode. I feel like the stuff with Giorgio could have just happened in last week's episode. We could have had mm -hmm. more time with that. And then that would have given us less to juggle this week and yep. more time to focus on some of the more interesting stuff, like the stuff going on with the Dira and Stamets and the Nebula yep. and that storyline and the stuff going on with Burnham and the sanctuary planet with book and his family story. Yeah, that should have been so that should have been just been its own um, mm -hmm. episode right there. Yeah. So let's talk about the stuff with book. So we have to go back to his home world. Um, and this ties in with the Emerald chain storyline that we've been building up with the season. Uh, we find out, and I don't know if we if we knew this before, but during the burn, um, it caused the moon on his planet to shift and the tidal changes forced sea locusts, I think they were called sea locusts, to yeah, come up out like of their that. normal habitat and basically just storing crops on his planet. So before we dive into this full story and, and get into this, what did you think of the design of the sea locusts? Because I immediately noticed they were pretty cool looking with the blue yeah. on them and everything. Um, yeah, like the special effects in this entire, even in the entire show, I have no real complaints about some of the, I have some questions on design choices being given a timeline, but not a, it's uh, 900 years in the future. I don't mm. care anymore. Just throwing out the window. Yeah. So still, uh, I absolutely <clears throat> have no complaints about the, any of these special effects. They're all so really good. Makes me wonder though, because we got a lot in this week's episode. There's actually a battle at the end of this episode as well mm. that we have um, in space. And we'll talk about that, uh -huh. but we got so much this week in the episode. I wonder if the stall that we had from last week, the, the, the down tempo nature of last week's episode uh, yeah. was money that they didn't have, that they had to invest this week for all the stuff that happened because there was a lot of um a lot of special effects uh in this week's episode compared to last week so i wonder if that had a little bit to do with that uh yeah, you know so basically um with the sea locust thing in the emerald chain is osira i don't know if her directly but the emerald chain offered assistance to help with this problem 
um, by giving them a some type of deterrent for the sea locusts to go away. But the only way they would give them this this uh, technology to help with this was by giving up all their transworms on their planet. And so the people of the sanctuary rejected the offer. And uh, that's where we come in with the, the tie to the Emerald Chain in this week's storyline. And uh, what do you think about this species? Because apparently uh, books species looks humanoid, but they actually have empathic connections to the animals oh, yeah, of their drugs. world. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? Is that because a lot of people seem to like this storyline and they like these characters? Mm, I find it interesting. I kind of wish they would expound upon them more, but like I yeah. said, it needs its own episode of exploring the culture like they would have done a TNG, but yeah. Whatever. Well, I mean, yeah, we go from having, what, 23 to 26 episodes a season to, like, 13. So there's not a lot, 10 to 13 episodes. I don't mind shorter seasons, but they've introduced so many elements this season that I actually want more. Like, I I really thought last season was well-packaged, the pacing, the amount of episodes. Too bad it doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah, but this season, it feels like we have so many things to talk about yeah, and not enough episodes. It's like, now it's it's getting interesting, but didn't he just condense everything and it's like... Can we yeah. go back to that thing? Uh, no, okay, we're done with. This. Oh, now we're going with uh, Michael Burnham Power Hour. Okay, yeah. Uh, so we see at the beginning of this episode. So we have Osira there, and see, she... I'll get it, Osira, Osiris, because yeah. she's Orion. Yeah, eh? yeah. Come on, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> you're not a fan of the name, then Osiris. No. Um, so she's punishing Tolo for basically what happened on the prison planet that they were on by feeding him to a trans worm. And um, I mean, that can't be the only reason they want trans worms. Right. I mean, I feel like that's such a weird, I like, <laughs> I mean, you have one, like I you said, just punish people. With, are they punishing vast amounts of people with trans worms? I'm still kind of curious what good trans worms are outside of what we've I seen. I guess they make good exotic pets or something, I suppose. I guess it's such a weird thing though. Like I, I mean, she has one, does she need more transforms? They seem very difficult to fight against. Like I yes. can't see them being easily controlled. So to have one by itself seems like it's it's enough. I don't really know what they would need more for. I mean, I guess you're right. The exotic trade nature of them may be the yeah. reason why, but I don't know. I did want to say, though, based on what we knew from, and this is kind of backtracking a couple episodes, but I thought about it after seeing this week's episode, um, we're a thousand years in the future, and it seems like the only technology that's been affected by anything from the burn is the ability to travel fast. Yeah, it's distances. just warp travel. Right. So outside of that, we've seen technology advance quite a bit. We have full-on holographic ships. We have um, technology with, with personal transporters, things like that. What need would we have for manual labor a thousand years in the future? It feels like it's a very inefficient way to get anything done. Like on the planet that they were on with the Emerald Chain enslaving people and making them work for them or whatever, what would how would that be more efficient than technology? I don't think it would be. Uh, like I right? said, I, yeah, like I said uh, in the last episode, I think it's probably because if you make a robot, it's very specialized. But well, then again, we have androids, but then in that was only the Federation that banned uh, synthetics, according to Picard, which I got bored with after the fourth episode. Um, and then we have the holograms, which were from Voyager. And mm-hmm. they were using, at the end of Voyager, they were using holograms to mine uh, the lithium out of asteroids. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I just don't see any reason for the Emerald Chain to have and it is not any like, kind it, of punishment it, or enslaving of, of characters. I, yeah, I don't, and it's not like uh, Android. It's not like um, any of these other Federation. The, the Federation is like, what, a few dozen ships now? Who cares yeah. about Federation law? Use and build androids all you want. Build synthetics. Build them. And- um, the other thing is if you if when you're dealing with um labor from androids or holograms or whatever it may be you don't have to feed them you yeah. don't have to keep water for them you don't have to give them places to sleep like it just doesn't make a lot of sense from the standpoint of a thousand years it's from it's just a plot device at this point it is and i and i'm not too fond of it because i yeah. feel like it's such a weak plot device i feel like there needs to be something more substantial for the emerald chain to be a thing um also, but, and yeah. with being that uh, with the burn, which pretty much disables all uh, warp travel and warp engines, I'm sure they probably did a number on uh, the singularity drives that the Romulans have. Mm. What the yeah. hell happened to trans warp with the um, with the Borg? What happened to quantum slipstream slipstream exactly. technology? 
Yeah, there's a lot of questions. We still don't know yeah. the, the answer to all of them. Uh, but let's jump away from the storyline for a moment. I do want to talk about something else that we had this week that I wasn't sure about. So we have um saru is trying to figure out his catchphrase which i mean oh it's yeah that, 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 that's one of the few things i actually really liked about yeah yeah show, i think it's great for the audience like it's really yeah. funny but i don't know how much sense it actually makes on the show for him to have a catchphrase like they made it seem like it was a group effort um i thought it was okay this was probably yeah. the most jonathan Starch, frank yeah. This, yeah. yeah the most the most Did anybody say punch it there was like yeah. No, not like so that. I thought it was fun. I, I questioned yeah. a bit based on what we've seen on the show, whether or not it fit in, but as a Trek thing, it did feel the most Trek out yeah. of everything. Um, before we get back into the Emerald chain stuff, because that really does sort of head towards the end of the episode and the big storyline. I do oh, want to yeah. talk about the Stamets and Adira stuff that happened this week, which I thought was great um, dealing with the, the trill elements and dealing mm -hmm. with the non-binary elements. I think they did a really good job with that. And uh, uh, really as I, I kind of felt that whole scene was heavy handed. Like they just took, they just took freaking Shao Kahn's maul and just bashed you across the face with that whole thing. Not thinking yeah. TNG did a better job at doing a whole not binary thing back in the nineties when they had that whole race of those modern gender people mm -hmm. and they had, but then they started having people who were, you know, starting to be born male and be born female. Yeah. I thought that episode dealt with the whole bi non binary thing of more, subtlety didn't I'll have to go back and watch that episode because i remember yeah. it was a riker episode it was very heavily yeah, it was a riker riker. Episode. yeah um yeah, he, said, he like, didn't care i mean yeah. yeah it was like an entire race of non-binary and it's like why are we dealing with 21st century issues in the 30 what you know you're not, in? it's funny you mentioned that you're not the first person that that's actually made that comment to me when talking about discovery yeah that's like they should have um, been past this already I feel like there's a lot of things that are outdated logically within their world mm -hmm. um like giorgio's reaction to Stamets and Hugh's relationship. Yeah. Um, that was a little out. I mean, very, I say a little, probably a lot outdated by standards of like, just well, then again, it's kind of like she's Karen and then she was like in their universe, she, they, they banged everybody. So yeah. <laughs> um, I think that the, the way we have to look at this is from the terms of, um, uh, representation and inclusiveness within star mm. trek has been something that hasn't been directly addressed in a really long time so i think what they're trying to do is they're trying to make yeah. sure that, that we know this sort of goes with with the whole idea of the of the um, the punch lines that that saru was trying to come up with this catchphrase yeah. or whatever it doesn't necessarily totally makes sense within the world but yeah. it, from the viewer standpoint it's a way for us yeah, to I understand why the they show. did it i'm not like yeah. Yeah, i'm not like oh why are they having this non binary but, like, nah, but i, I totally care. agree cool. with you this yeah. should have been something that should have already so been addressed on the yeah. series it was yeah just so heavy-handed and there's a lot of people that were kind of trying to figure out um the connection with the idea of the trill because the trill as a symbiont like mm -hmm. uh as a, as a as a species are already non-binary because they're yeah. they move from one person to another yeah, without the any joint well they is did you have the memories of being both male and female right or whatever their so, was so yeah so i think they're trying to tie that the idea of the non-binary character mm -hmm. on the show and their journey with the journey of the trill and yeah. then also having a trans um partner who is within the memory of the trill as well yeah. uh i think for me I'm ex I'm excited to see that they're doing it in a way that sort of feels maybe outdated within what we're doing dealing with Star Trek, but connected to the world we're in. It does sort of make sense in that way. So yes. I'm I'm glad that they are make taking note of it, and I don't think we're going to have it in such a I don't know heavy handed way in the future. Yeah, I think it really yeah. was. The yeah, that was just idea. my whole thing. It's just that one that one scene. I was I was totally cool with there being not what I'm sorry, if with that person being totally non binary or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I was totally cool with that. I was just like, you really gonna bash us in the face. I also this? think That's we have like, to remember that that there's a lot of people that probably yeah. don't understand how to address someone who's non binary. Yeah. So I think that they wanted to address that on the show in a way that that made it easy for people to understand. Yeah, like I say, it's just uh, I, they probably could. Have yeah. So we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah. But but I, I'm happy to see that they are moving forward with that storyline. Yeah. It wasn't a throwaway thing. But the great thing is that Stamets and Adira have pinpointed what they believe is the 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 origin point for the burn, and supposedly it is in this it's this nebula the verabin nebula i believe is what they called it uh, yeah i couldn't remember um, the verabin nebula and it sounds like something we've 
that we've seen before, we've heard about before, but I don't think it is. But they're getting this distorted signal coming from that nebula. And it ends up being the same melody that we've been hearing for a while now yeah. throughout this, the episodes. This is giving me a flashback to like the Cylon Battlestar Galactica musical thing that happened in their final season. I don't know if you watched that show or not, but uh, were- I watched a. Uh- I watched a good bit of it. I don't remember most of it because it was so long ago. Okay, so I don't want to spoil what happens, but there is a song, a melody that mm-hmm. plays throughout the series. I don't even want to say what song it is because I want I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But basically, it all converges and becomes this like fully realized, um, perfect circle of elements that come from the song, and these characters come together because of it. And so I was getting a lot of like vibes from that, um, from that moment, but there was something that happened in this episode that I don't know if it was a mistake or what, but Stamets points out the fact that the melody, um, was the same melody that Dr. Addis, which was back on the seed ship was tied to his family or that he was humming to Mm -hmm. his family. But Stamets wasn't on the ship when, when they did that, he wasn't on the away team. Right. Was he? I don't believe so. I don't think he was. I don't remember. <laughs> I think it was Michael Burnham. Yeah, it, it was, was Burnham. It was, it was other... Hugh, the Hugh, the doctor. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was Culver and, and, and uh, um, other chief security. With the, yeah, I can't uh, remember her thing. name. I feel yeah, bad yeah. now. I don't remember her name. Yeah, I, I like the character though. <laughs> yeah, like um, I feel like there's so many crew. Like in all the other Star Treks, we got to know the the, the bridge yeah. crew much better. And this show, we're just slowly over time learning about the bridge crew. And yeah, I feel like because they probably got time. so much feedback from the last two episodes, from the last two seasons, where it's why is it just Burnham? Yeah. So, uh, but Stamets wasn't there for that. So unless Hugh told him specifically yeah, probably, about that, I suppose. I mean, they're it, just, anyway, it felt so. weird that he was the one to deliver that information. So um, anyway, we are we arrive at that nebula. And the distortion signal, they again, they distribute it. It's coming from uh, this melody or whatever. And it's from a Starfleet vessel, which is something that I think we kind of surprised everybody as well. And that's kind of where we leave off on that storyline. But a lot of um, blogs were pointing to an episode of Short Trek, which we talked about this earlier oh, yeah. from CBS All Access, the episode Calypso, which is a 18-minute, very like mini condensed story based in this universe. And it ties into a version of Discovery from a thousand years in the future. And it came out before season two or would have been around the, the beginnings of season two. So I obviously they knew where they were going with the show. They knew where they were going with season two uh, already. So when they wrote this episode, they knew they were going to be going into the future. They knew it was going to be a thousand years in the future. But if you would have seen this before the season ended, you would have not known what was going on, which I think is okay. It's fine. Um, but in that episode, we're dealing with Zora, which is the intelligence within the AI of the ship that has evolved to a point where she's almost basically a a human type character trapped in a digital world. We have this, um, this, uh, ship from a species that lives on Alderaan for a character named Kraft, who is escaping from a species of aliens called the Vas Vassarin, I think was the name they used. Yeah. Anyway, it was a species that I'd never heard of before. I'd never heard of them. And so um, he's on the ship and he starts to bond with Zora, this AI. And she reveals that it's a thousand years in the future. And she's been waiting there um, basically all this time for the ship to come in, for the captain or the crew to come and retrieve her, basically. So we talked a little bit about this before we started the the review here. Uh, what are your general theories on this? If this if this is a tie in, how would it work? I know you spoke to me about it, but let's break it yeah. down a little bit for for everybody. From watching. what I was thinking is like, okay, at the end of episode, at the end of season two, when they were going to just jump ahead, jump uh, ahead in time, I'm thinking maybe there was a split. Maybe the, this this discover we know went off uh, to the uh, went off 900 years of the future, and maybe the other ship was left behind, or maybe it got split off in a different timeline. Yeah, because I the only problem with that is that the idea of taking the ship to the future was to take that AI out of time. Yeah. So if one of them was left behind, oh yeah, control would end up getting it in. Right, yeah, so that wouldn't unless work. unless that ship was put somewhere else to hide it. Yeah, like a nebula. Yeah, where it's, it's, you like they it. had the pole position here. But then, where's the? How does the song come into play with that? The the melody they're hearing, which is also very weird. So that's why I'm a little bit concerned about how this season is going to wrap up. If everything is going to sort of tie itself up in this bow, or if we're going to have this sort of tidal wave of stuff happen at the very end, 
that makes it feel like, oh, it all makes sense now, even if it doesn't. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about that. All right. So let's jump back from that um, and talk about Book and Michael, which, by the way, his real name is a book. Um, I forgot. They, they did mention like 80, like 80 billion times, but I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to get into it. It was a weird name. Book is better yeah. anyway. It's like uh, they go down this, or something. Yeah, they go down to the planet and get ambushed by his brother mm-hmm. and their their team of people on this planet which by the way are they the Space only Rangers. people on this planet i mean i felt like it was weird that they were yeah, the only people we ever well, actually came in contact with but I, i'm not really gonna say much because in the other like you know previous episodes previous um iterations like discover not discovery like uh voyager ds9 because mm-hmm. especially in ds9 because every time you go to every time to show a picture of cardassia it's the mm-hmm. same spot every yeah. single time that even when you go to uh chronos it's the same spot it's that same shot of um first city and keep in mind this isn't the only sort of plot device they use in this episode mm-hmm. there is a um an annoying thing that star trek does and i and i acknowledge it i love star trek like i've said yeah, but there is it's, an, <laughs> it's it's annoying things they do that sort of we know about one of them is like some sort of block on the abilities that the ship can do and on this planet oh, apparently yeah. it can't teleport and you can't just tra- like scan for people or something like you can't track ships and whatnot um which is weird because when osira shows up with the uh, viridian i think is the name of her ship viridian? yeah viridian, get viridian. It they're green yeah so she shows up with the ship viridian she's able to to pinpoint spots on the planet to shoot to target so if yeah, you I can't think track the, people uh, so yeah, i think there was just the generators for the um the planetary shield that they had. I think that's right. what she was targeting. Yeah, but I but she shouldn't have been able to find them. Apparently, the planet you can't track things, you can't transport. Well, so I would say it's probably because those generators generate so much energy. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, get hit here. Maybe. So we'll go along with that. But either way, this the 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 idea for this planet, the the linchpin and everything is that you can't teleport people from the surface, basically. So if you need to get them, you have to go down and get close enough to get them up off the planet surface with like a shuttle or something. So it's one of those things. There's always a an issue with a Star Trek episode. Either the caves are too thick, they can't transport through them, or there's a scattering field, mm. or there's always something. So you get kind of used there's to it, a certain ore in a rock that's preventing a, a positive light. Yeah, you, you have to like you have to roll your eyes quietly when they mm. do stuff like this. Anyway, so that's the rules of this planet. Um, so they're dealing with that, and so basically, Osira wants Ren back, who is the Andorian, who she had captured correct Ren. yes um and the one with the antennas that were uh which cut off or according to enterprise they should grow back within a month yeah well you know we'll see we'll see so kaihini who is um book's brother which by the way another thing that kind of bugged me was they have two very different accents but they live on a different planet like shut up stop using logic i didn't totally get it what <laughs> stop using logic (laughs) so anyway some people seem to like some some people seem to like the accent differences i kind of bugged me a little bit but anyway i like to to nitpick i like to nitpick so yeah i had to get a and hear someone's like stop using logic right so (laughs) kaheem wants to go ahead and turn ren over yeah because of what's going on with her with osira you know bombing the planet or whatever Mm -hmm. uh with photon torpedoes which by the way they're still using photon torpedoes a thousand years in the future i a little bit confused about that as well, Look, but in uh, if Star Trek Online has anything to go by, Star Photons appears are still very useful. They come yeah. back within just like I forget their timers. I think it's like fifteen seconds. While like quantum and the other, yeah, it's like quantum transphasic. The other ones they take like twenty, almost thirty seconds to come back. Oh, like, okay, all right, well, makes sense. <laughs> well, that's, I that's still feel like we would have advanced the technology <laughs> a bit, but we'll we'll go yeah. with that. Um, and and, and I'm trying to that useful. <laughs> So why she's going after Ren, I keep thinking, like, what could this guy possibly have that is so important information-wise that Osira wants him back? Mm-hmm. Like, what could he possibly know? Yeah. And we find out that he's got a huge bombshell of information. We'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah. Um, but he says, he tells uh, Saru that, like, I can, her ship is is got a lot of defensive, but I know where the weak points are. If we want to take them out, basically, and disable the ship, this is what we have to do. But then Saru's like, well, I don't want to start a war between this, the, the, the fragile federation that we have mm. now because 
against the Emerald Chain. Nobody wants that. So they're like, well, why don't we just take another ship then? Even though it's all semantics at that point. Yeah. I mean, but anyway, so they they take Bookship and you have Detmere, who I love this character, by the way, yeah. um, piloting the ship. She uses manual control, which felt like a total throwback uh, to have this battle with the Viridian and you know, in book ship and it looks really cool. I like the battle. Yeah, I think the special yeah, effects were great. great. Yeah, it's great this battle. was probably more JJ Abrams Trek than it was mm -hmm. um, anything else, but I thought it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, we end up having this good firefight, but then like, we also have a battle on the surface between book and Kahim, which comes to a stalemate and they decide not to fight it out as brothers or whatever, and kind of um, make up or whatever. But I guess the big bombshell at the end of this, after we, you know, resolve all of these issues, is, is that the Emerald Chain, which has been sort of putting a stranglehold on the Federation because they've been able to go a lot of places because of their mm -hmm. dilithium, they're running out of dilithium. Yep. So they're not going to be able to do much of anything mm -hmm. soon. We don't know exactly how little they have, but they, they're running out. And this is why... Osira wanted Ren because this information would be yeah, detrimental, detrimental to the, em yeah. the Emerald Chain, especially if you get it out to all the outposts that they're strong arming at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, you can choke them out of dilithium at this point. So I think that's kind of what's what they're thinking about here. Yeah, that's it. And the Federation probably just got a big boost of dilithium from the um, Discovery. That mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're up that, they're three, 900 years in the past, so dilithium wasn't a thing. They have a huge stock of it. Right. So, uh, which makes me wonder if time travel wasn't outlawed, people could just time travel and get dilithium and bring it back to the future if it wasn't outlawed. But it is, I guess, at this point. So it doesn't yeah, really and matter, if but... going by the temporal cold war of um, the Enterprise, yeah, okay, I couldn't remember the show. Yeah, going back to the temporal cold war, the Enterprise was anything uh -huh. to go by. Uh, you don't really want to mess around with time too much. Yeah, yeah. So we got that going on. Um, and the resolution at the end, I think the the last thing that we find that we do is we amplify the empathic powers of books peoples mm -hmm. and use that to coerce. Actually, the I think it's just together. those two who are the space druids. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, I think it's just those two. Well, they they coerce the um, the sea locusts to go back mm -hmm. into the sea and hopefully they can start harvesting things again yeah. and not be hurt or whatever. Um, but yeah, that so, I thought was a very next generation type style episode, right? Well, that one part was a very next generation type thing, which I thought, okay, yeah, that's cool. They, like, yeah. you know, how they did with the space jellyfish and all that mm. in next generation. Yeah. So I thought, so this episode really did encompass a lot of different elements from different periods of Trek, which is yeah. which kind of interesting. Each, if you ask me, each one of those elements should have been its own episode. Probably. They, probably, they probably didn't have the time. Yeah. Uh, so overall, I think we covered a lot of stuff this week. Um, the only thing was, I, I also saw some uh, questions about the Orion slavery comment that Osira made. Yeah. And the thing, here's the thing with the Orions. Is that like, call, is that, is, has that been retconned? I think that was retconned. I, that, that's probably a retcon because the Orions is, is actually the females who are the dominant of the right. species. Yeah. And it's just kind of like they, they put themselves into slavery to get the upper, they kind of like, Basically, you think, oh, yeah, this is just some Orion slave girl, whatever. Don't ignore her. But then next thing you know, you have a dagger in your back. She's taking over everything. Yeah, or so that you put comment the seems yeah. really wrong because yeah. it doesn't – historically, we know that that wasn't – that back in the original series, we weren't mm -hmm. sure of it. But then it got retcon later on. So I thought that was a weird comment. When I heard it, I was like, but were they really? I thought that they were not. But – It's like they kind of put themselves in a weak position only to get the upper hand later on. Right. And especially yeah. with the females that have that pheromones that just make all the males do whatever whatever they want them to do and the females yeah. are, and and the females of another species to come right. more docile. If you're curious about what we're talking about, go watch The Cage from the original series. Um, and especially the I forget which episode it is, but it's a Enterprise episode where they, they get bumped, they get boarded by Orions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the cage is the one where you, we always, you know, whenever you see like advertisements for Star Trek, at least back in the day, the original mm -hmm. series, it always showed the episode with Kirk and the dancing green yeah, alien green, or whatever. Yeah, dancing green woman. Yeah. So that's, that's what you need to go watch is, yeah. is that episode. Uh, so anyway, but other than that, I thought this episode kept me a bit more engaged than last week's episode. Yeah. Uh, um, I, but I still feel like it was kind of all over the place, but not necessarily in a bad yeah. way. I just wanted more of each individual thing yeah. that we were getting. 
And I, I mean, is wanting more make it a bad episode? Yeah, no, I don't I know. Guess, yeah, I suppose not. It, well, in a way, it, it's kind of like they spent so little attention on it, but then it quickly went to something else. It's, it probably could have made for a bad episode all in all, but... Mm. Yeah, I yeah, it's like each individual parts weren't bad, but when they cramped it all, it's kind of like that one uh, movie, Jupiter Ascending, which everyone says this would have made a great three, like a three part movie, but being that it's all into one, it's kind of it's kind kind of crappy. Yeah, yeah, I remember that movie. That was an I interesting. Wanted, I film, wanted to so. see that movie too, but everyone yeah. said it was garbage, so I was like, never. It's mind. worth watching. It's not absolutely horrible. Okay. There are some good elements to it, but it's not great. Don't go into it thinking it's great, but okay. it's not horrible either. Um, all right, so on a scale of one to ten, um, what would you give this week's episode of Star Trek Discovery? Okay, uh, reminder: like one for me is god awful. Five neutral. Ten amazing. Not okay. perfect, but amazing. Me, right. I give it about a six. It was all right. Okay. That's cool. Okay. Um, what did you give last week's episode? I think I gave it out of five. So you like this one better than last week's episode? Yes. Um, Even though it was I'm, all over the place, I still like this better than Burnham Power Hour. Because I know we had a big discussion. Last week's episode was tough to, to score for me. It was really, yeah. really tough. <laughs> um, I would say this week's episode, I feel like it's around a seven or 7.5 for me. Okay. Um, I don't necessarily think it was much better than the previous one, but it was more engaging for me. Yeah. I felt like it was, I, I was more interested in the stories. Whereas the, the episode prior to this felt like looking back at it now, like it's weird because I don't want to retcon my score, but looking back <laughs> at it now, I think this one was just more entertaining in my opinion. Uh, I think they tried to be more, I don't know. I don't, what's the word I'm looking for? With the, the previous episode, Unification Three, they were trying really hard to do one of these like sort yeah, of like yeah, um, philosophical, make yeah, you think that episodes when it really like, was not like pseudo metaphysical, mm -hmm. like just weird thing. Yeah, and it didn't really work for me. Yeah. yeah, it didn't really work for me. It was it was a lot of stuff. This one was a little bit more entertaining, but I don't know if it was much better. I, I just feel like it was more engaging. So I'm going to still not give it anything higher than an eight. I don't think it was worthy of anything more than that. Uh, we've had some great episodes this season. I, some yeah. of the reviews I was reading for this season says that we've had some of the best episodes the show has ever had. Yeah. And we've had some of the worst stuff that's happened that yeah. we've ever had. So it's a mixed bag this season. Of, I have to say, even the episode with um, when they first meet Ardra and they go to um, not not that Arja, Art, but the Trill Lady. <laughs> the Trill Adira, Adira. Adira. Yeah. Arja was someone else. Yeah. Adira, yeah. Yeah. When they get um when they get uh that person and then they go to the Trill home world. I actually thought that was a very good episode. I would have rated that about an about an eight or seven point five. Well, would you say that episode. was your favorite one of the season? Yeah, that was probably one of my favorite episodes. Okay, I agree with you. I really, I really like enjoyed that episode. I really think yeah. the trill are interesting. I thought it was great because I'm like this felt like we were actually finally dealing with some classic star trek mm -hmm. stuff yeah i do have a question before we go and we're and i'll probably ask this every single week until we until we get an answer for this sure. what happened to the klingons where are they at in this future <laughs> <laughs> i can't imagine that that whole Man. like every klingon just disappearing and letting the emerald chain wondering that too we but have the andorians we have the orions we have some people in the federation where are the klingons they probably are trying to figure out how they're going to, how are they going to fix the Cleons to begin with? Because even though I didn't hate the, those Cleons, I hated how they looked. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, they are acting like Cleons, but they do not look anything like the Cleons. If there were any other species besides Cleons, I was like, oh, these guys are kind of cool. I wonder how they would act with, with the Cleons. Like, you know, with the Jim Hardar, I want to see like the Jim Hardar and the Cleons fight. That'd be cool. And are we was, still in the Alpha Quadrant? That makes me question whether or not we're still in the Alpha Quadrant. Because I don't really know where well, we are. Earth was, of course, zero one. Right. Well, yeah, because quadrant zero one, and that's kind of like on the line between the alpha and beta quadrants. Uh, I, I don't. They, I, they don't have a real. It's a gray area map. right now. Yeah, they don't have a galaxy area. map, so I have no yeah. idea. Um, what happened to the Herogen? What about the Undine? Where are all these races? Oh yeah, where's species eight four seven two? What the happened board? to what happened to the rest the of the board? board? I want, no, I want to see the up. I want to see it up because they did make the and the Andorians look a bit different. I want to see an updated Cardassians. Did, yeah, Cardassians are my that. favorite race in Star Trek. Oh, I want okay, to see well, updated Cardassians. I will say this though. I want to know because as far as I know, the Borg would have adapted to losing Dilithium. They would have adapted somehow. Trans warp. But, I know. They didn't. I don't even think they used Dilithium. 
I'm sure someone in the comments is going to correct me so on let me that. Say, but, I've yeah. been watching Voyager back, and I was actually on the episode where the Borg, th there was a, 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 a alien from a planet who had been had been taken over by the Borg, and he created a fake Starfleet ship with the oh yeah the uh, yeah the, the I forget what that ship was called. But uh, yeah, yeah, Quantum Slit Stream that had that yeah. that Arrowhead. I actually had that ship in Star Trek Online. It's That's a great, great ship, by the way. It's but, not that um, great in Star Trek Online. It looks cool, but it's not that great. Okay, well, I will say this: that when that kind of technology existed a thousand years ago, I find it hard to believe that regular yeah, that warp. Manec it was like it was like molecular something, or I can't remember what it, what else it was called. But yeah, yeah it's like they can pretty much repli re replicate any anything. It was like a it was a mega replicator, right? And that was almost a thousand years past, and they couldn't come up. So I'm curious to why losing regular warp would affect the Federation in such a way. Yeah, I hope we get an answer to that. Yeah. I do. I think it's a good storyline, but I question. Yeah, they whether or not I losing regular warp came would up with something else besides warp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I guess that's where we're going to wrap this up, you guys. In the comments below, let us know if you agree with our scores. And if you disagree, tell us why and leave your score down below. If you have any questions for either one of us, um, leave them in the comments. As a matter of fact, starting next week, we may actually take some a couple of viewer questions and uh, answer those in a in one of these reviews. So we'll see where we go from there. Um, all of Omega's information is going to be down in the info box below. If you want to check out his deviant art, which by the way, you said some people have been. So yeah, I, yeah, I saw in the comics of the last star thing. They say, yeah, I'm liking what I see here. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. So check out his deviant art, check out his Twitch for some gameplay stuff and follow him on Twitter. Uh, my, my Twitter is down below as well, but you guys already know where to find me. So I guess I'm not, am I shouting out myself? I'm not really totally sure. Um, subscribe. If you're new to my channel, leave a like on this video. And if you're enjoying the Star Trek content, let us know. We will continue to do Trek talk even after discovery has ended its season because there are so many Star Trek topics we can cover <laughs> and we could probably have some special guests on. So if you guys are interested in that and you have any specific topic you would like to talk to with us about, uh, drop your name in the bucket and, uh, we will start pulling some names out at the end of the season of discovery and i actually can't wait to review like um some of these other seasons in a full like picard and lower decks so you can let me know what you think about it so we'll go from there <laughs> anyway we're gonna wrap it up thank you guys so much for checking out the video and we'll catch you in the next review see you then